I, I love talking to coaches like yourself that are, are experienced in, in creating competitiveness rather than sustaining competitiveness within the programs that they're in. And you, you've had the opportunity to do that both with California and, and Yale in your, in your more recent career. Right. And, um, Brown back in the day. Of course. That uh, I, I would love to just hear you talk about the, the process, the early process when you're coming into a program, the, the considerations that you're making in terms of that evolution and guiding that evolution for the athletes. Um, you know, and, and the, the hurdles that you face along the way, the, the challenges and how you how you approach overcoming them, you know, as you go. I mean, the hurdle the hurdles are uh, just thinking about Yale, I mean the hurdles are from a coaching standpoint are, are really the people. Uh, you know, when you come, there's a group of people here. Uh, and I remember uh, in one of the first uh, meetings I had with the squad, it was the first meeting, I let them know that uh, from this day forward, uh, they didn't need to have a whole lot of concern about the training protocol or what was being taught. You know, the biomechanics of the stroke, I said, you know, I'll be really clear about that and I'll be very eager to introduce you to those, those elements, but you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be concerned whether it's right or wrong or indifferent and so forth. I said, I'll be happy to, to work with you and work through this process with you uh, and, and answer questions, give rationale, so forth and so on. Uh, but I said, the, uh, but the real, what I really want you to fully understand is that it's, it's not so much the training protocol, it's not so much how we row, those are extremely important. But if you're not invested, deeply invested in doing these things at a very high level, there's not a thing that will change. In other words, it's not the protocol, it's not the biomechanics. Those things are all very important, but it's what you bring to them. So it's really in your hands. Uh, and I don't, I, I think any kind of, if you want to call it transformation, uh, for some people, they're absolutely ready and they jump on, jump on it. But for a lot of people, uh, they didn't sign up for what I was putting forward. That wasn't part of the syllabus, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I, can, I can understand that and respect that. Uh, so really, a, a change of culture is the coach articulates and lives and breathes and emotes what the culture is in the beginning. And then you look to attract people that are interested in engaging in that world. And so it takes time, you know, particularly at school, uh, you know, an Ivy League school, which has a very limited number of people you can support for admission. So uh, that's the way it goes. And you know, I don't know what percent, but a significant percent of people are not interested in transformation. They like it the way they were doing it. Uh, that's what they signed up for. That's what they wanted to digest and so forth. Uh, but certainly back to what you talk about parents and the dovetailing of academics to, you know, uh, high performance rowing, uh, they're complementary. They're not exclusive. Yeah, not, they're not exclusive, not even close. If they were exclusive, they wouldn't exist in a place like Yale. Why would Yale University support something that was detrimental to, you know, academic discovery? Of course. It would. Yeah. In those in those early stages, as you're as you're guiding that transition, and you have the, 
combination of the, the old school mentality and you're trying to bring in your new, how do you lead it so that the new takes that ground, you know, from year to year and that the, the that there's not a kind of anchor effect of that, that what people are used to versus what you're trying to build with this group class coming in. Well, people graduate. You know. People graduate. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of, it's not as if the old are there in perpetuity. Yeah, right. Uh, people graduate and uh, uh, what's one of the things that's very, very helpful in a transition or any particular type of program, you know, the coach needs to make it clear that what's honored here, what's honored is bring, endeavoring to bring full measure every day. Not what boat you end up in. Yeah. So it's not as if all the good guys are in you know, varsity and the not so good, the sort of good guys are in the JV and the not quite as good guys in the 3V right. at all. The honor, the respect is, is garnered by the strength of the endeavor to, to, to do this at, at full measure. That's what is, that's what's honored and that's what's respected. And our guys here get that. And at the same time, they want to be in the fastest boat they can be in. Of course, yeah. But they know that they're not sort of looked down upon. If somebody's bringing it, that's really good. Well, I think that's a credit guy, especially for the younger athletes, to value value the work and not the position. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you'll to, to try to to try to fight that tendency to to put you know whether it's a one B or a higher or or whatnot on a pedestal. Right. And, right. And depreciate the value of those those lower athletes coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, Iowa Saw is very toxic and we fight against. But uh, you know it's difficult because it's a lot of ways it's tied into our culture. You know, in high school there's there's seniority given by age. I know. You know? And it's yeah. like why? What is? You have done nothing to earn your age other right. than having to be born right. you know, a right. year earlier. Right. You know, and so we. Yeah, I am certainly endeavored through my coaching to to pull that emphasis off, and I never gave too much deference to higher and upper classes over lower classes. Um, we valued the work, you know, and uh, but there were still struggles. You know, we, we, you know, in my last season, we had an eighth grader in our top boat, and eleven graders weren't very happy with that. And right. so, and well, there was conflict. But yeah. um, I've, I've I've never worked with that age group, right. so I really can't yeah. speak to that. Uh, you know, those issues. I'm you know I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I think it, 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 I think the way to deal with it, at least at this level, is being very open about it yeah. with the squad. And this, this is where we have our squad meetings, and this is where those thoughts are expressed. And then the behavior of and the interaction from one athlete to the other. And I noticed it's certainly not the camaraderie is not simply based on what boat somebody's in. I see guys are in the fifth boat walking out with guys in the varsity shooting and shit. The friendships are not built on what boat they're in. And how do you how do you bring, or are you relying on a lot of leadership from the captains to help with that oh, uh, internal yeah, culture? Yeah, or, and oh, how do you communicate with them to, to reinforce? Oh, what you're yeah, doing? absolutely. I mean, it's not only the captains, but it's it's the squad, it's the individuals. You know, it's people. You know, and I let them know. Uh, without question that no matter what year they're in, and that's tricky, but uh, you can influence the squad by your actions, by what you do. You don't, it's not about class and what boat you're in. So if you want this environment of people bringing it on a day-by-day -day basis, you don't have to be a world-class horseman to do that, or a senior to do that. And we see examples of that. I see examples of that in the squad over and over again. So examples of that at Brown in 1994. At Brown, every single heavyweight boat went undefeated. All the way through the season. IRA, Eastern Sprints, the whole enchilada. 
Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. The captain of that squad was in the third boat. Awesome, yeah. The captain of last year's crew here was between the 2B and 3B. Talking about... So be open with people. Let them know what your values are, what you think is really worthy, and what you think really makes a difference in life and in interaction. Make it really clear, articulate it, and then live it so, you don't, so you're not you know, simply lauding you know, the top yeah, issue, top, of course, but yeah. you're looking at and you're lauding people who are really struggling to get it uh, as well. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, and just you know, acknowledging the things that, are, that, that make the squad work, being where you're supposed to be and when you're supposed to be there. Uh, all that. When you're communicating with the athletes about specific goal setting you know, through the year, competitive goal setting, you know, when you come into Yale, clearly your goal is to develop a program that's at the top, you know, similar to what you've done with Cal, but it's not that's not an overnight process. No, it's not. You know, and so, you know, when you're talking to these athletes, what is what is the strategy you take in terms of looking at them and determining the step in that process that they're capable of reaching, you know, either on that season or on that year or or two or three years, and then communicating to the athlete that that's the step, and while still understanding kind of what the long term goal yeah, is I, without those. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think you have to talk about what races you're going to win or what races. I think all you're doing is you know, just stay, stay with what you can control. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's we're bringing. Let's go. Let's fix this. We're working together. And the races happen. 